Welcome to the Badger, the highest DPM that you can get your hands on in World of Tanks. This is going to be a full tank guide, giving you the full rundown on the vehicle and the added bonus of that I had to have free marked this vehicle before I can make this. First things first, we're going to go through the stats and also compare it to the Tortoise. So just to start off, this tank, yes, does have the highest DPM in the game. It has 3,388 base DPM. Ignore the 430B because that is no longer in the game, so the Badger is the top dog. Closely followed by the Tortoise with only 8.04 less DPM. And considering that the Badger has a 480 alpha damage gun and a reload of 8.15 seconds, compared to the Tortoise with 400 alpha and 6.8, I would rather have the Tortoise gun than the Badger gun. This goes from having 326 millimeters of pen on the Tortoise to then having 320 millimeters of pen on the Badger, which doesn't really make sense to me. Why do you go up a tier and then get less pen? Also, another massive thing about the Tortoise is that it does get the really, really wide gun arc at 20 degrees either side, whereas the Badger, you're only going to get 15 each side. However, the armor layout on the Badger compared to the Tortoise is kind of just night and day, the difference, actually. The Badger is a properly tier 10 assault tank destroyer whereas the tortoise depending on which side you show it's great but if you do show that capola the chances of you getting penned there are pretty high and if they do decide to fire premium at you it just goes straight through yes you can negate this by going and using all of your gun arc and only showing this half of your tank but still they can still pen you pretty easily they only need 300 pen Quickly wrapping up just this comparison between the Badger and the Tortoise, I'd rather have the gun of the Tortoise, and I'd probably rather play the Tortoise most times, but the Badger having 10 km an hour more top speed than the Tortoise is massive. And considering that it can go fully hold down and just sit there and you can't do anything against it, that's also a massive bonus as well. So I'd rather have the gun of the Tortoise, but then everything else of the Badger. But speaking about the armor layout of the Badger, this thing, as I said, is a proper tier 10 assault tank destroyer. This needs 330 to 340 pen to go through the weak spot if it's hold down. Which is just, um, yeah. Well done, Wargaming. Remember when weak spots were on tanks? That was a good time, wasn't it? As you can see, even with 320 APCR, it does nothing. The, you can go right below the gun and it's a 50-50 chance. But if they are hiding this uh, lower bit of the hull, good luck. Even with something like 340 heat, you're still going to struggle. Let's take the 121, for example, with 340 heat. It's only really like a 60% chance if you go low enough. But then as you go lower and you try to hit there, you could then just go a little bit too low and then not pin at all. So let's be honest, it's like a 60% chance directly in the center. But the, because of the way these are actually rounded, they it's not completely smooth. Like as you can see, this is, each one has like a different layer. And I mean, if, if you're this close, then it's yes, it's like a guaranteed pen. But if you're a little bit further away, then let, let's say that you're however far away, like all the way back here, right? That is that is not an easy shot to hit. And you only have a 60% chance at most. Yeah, this is painful when you come up against this. And just, you, you just have to pray that you manage to pen it. The other thing that, is quite annoying on the Badger is that, well, at least for the person playing it, is that when you actually angle, it doesn't do anything. Because even though that, yes, this becomes very, very strong, the sloping, this becomes a little bit weaker, actually, because this is on the side. And if you go to the other side, the exact same thing applies. And also, if you go a little bit too far, you will then expose this slot here, and you'll get easily penned. And even with AP rounds, depending on how far around they are, you could get penned up here, you could get penned here, but then at this point, why would you not just go straight for the track and track it? However, there is one thing that is even more annoying on the Badger than anything else, which is the lower plate. The lower plate, as you can see, this is with its standard round, so it's penning itself. 272 millimeters of pen, which is very, very good as a standard round for tier 10. Why is there two little slots here, either side? <laughs> It's so annoying. It goes from about 270 to 280 millimeters thick. And if you want to just pen this tank in the lower plate, always go for the middle. 
Do not go either side, left or right, because it will bounce. And you can actually see this in the visual model where it does have this extra slab of plate here and here. So be aware of that when you are facing one of these things. Apart from that, this tank is absolutely insane uh, with the armor layout. And yeah, I mean, you the side armor, let's be honest, you can actually HE pen it with a hundred and so pen. Um, and in the rear, it's only 38 millimeters thick. The sides and rear of the Badger are awful, but the front is very, very good. So let's now go ahead and talk about the equipment choices on this vehicle. In my opinion, there is only one equipment choice, and that is HP Turbo Rammer. Now, some players may want to forgo the HP for vents. However, I don't really see the point of it because this vehicle, you need the HP because of the track health. Any turretless TD needs as much track health as it can possibly get. Hell, any tank in the game needs as much track health as it can possibly get because less, less chance of you being permatracked, the better. And even with the field mods, which we'll come onto in a second, it can still get permatracked with the first field mod. The field mod doesn't increase your track health that much. It only goes up to about 325, meaning that anything over that alpha damage can just perma track you. With HP and the first field mod, you can get 552 track health rather than just a 325. And that is with using bounty. Obviously, it's going to be slightly less if you just used the normal HP. But you would still probably be about 500 or track health even with just the standard HP, which obviously you should put in the correct slot if you're not going to be using bounty. Which then brings us onto the field mods for this vehicle. Now, on the left hand side, there is only one choice. You go left, right, right. One choice for pretty much every single tank destroyer in the game. You should never ever be picking the right hand field mod for the first one and vice versa. You should never be picking the left hand field mod for either number four or number five. Maybe E25 could benefit from number five being on the left, but even then I'd probably rather just choose the view range. We've been through this a million times at this point, so I'm not gonna you know keep going on about it with the field mods, but if you want a full video, I have a full video on field mods. On the right hand side, this is where it's more down to your personal preference. Now I have actually forgone the extra DPM to get some more hit points and also the crew protection. Some people will want to have the most DPM in the game and that is completely fine and you can choose the right hand field mod. In my opinion, e either one of these is fine to choose. You, it doesn't matter which one you choose here. Um, it just depends on the player. And the same thing kind of goes for number eight. The problem with this tank is that it goes incredibly slow in reverse. So I want to actually buff the reverse speed as much as I can. Because actually getting out of situations sometimes is more important than just repairing your tracks faster. Especially considering that we're using HP on this, it's already got pretty decent track repair time. Whereas if we choose the left hand side, yes, it goes down to you know four seconds, but we go down to 13 in reverse which makes this tank feel very, very slow in reverse. And yes, we will earn some extra specific power to weight, but in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. We're still, we're only really losing, what, 0.6-ish uh, power to weight. So, eh, I'd rather just choose this and keep the uh, top, uh, top reverse speed. So with this, that means that we have 4,188 DPM. We have 2,430 hit points and we reload in 6.88 seconds. If we obviously were to use the right hand field mod for number seven, we would go down to 6.48 seconds uh, reload time, 4,447 DPM, and we would lose 100 of the uh, hit points. So we would go down to 2,340. And the final few things we'll talk about is the ammunition choices. And obviously we do have 272 millimeters of AP pen, which being AP is very, very nice. It normalizes obviously better than AP does, or APCR does, sorry. So that 272 millimeters of pen is pretty effective at most things that you're going to shoot at. Obviously, if you are trying to free mock this tank and you do want the best of the best, then, you know, full gold. But I've already marked this thing. I don't really care about full try hard in this tank anymore. Um, so we'll save some credits and just do this. The APCR rounds are very, very nice. Uh, they don't go super fast though. They only go at 1,250. Um, same thing with the AP rounds, actually. They only go at 1,000 meters a second. So they're not very fast rounds, no matter what you use. Um, and the, the added bonus of that extra 250 meters a second, you probably won't notice it too much. 
it does have 320 pen on the premium rounds. Um, obviously not as much as a tortoise for whatever reason, but they are very, very nice premium rounds. For the HE rounds on this tank, you do get 130 HE pen, which means that you can do a lot of damage to a lot of people. And you, you will get near 6,000 DPM if you do use the HE rounds um, with it fully maxed out with the um, equipment and field mods and whatnot. But it, this is insane DPM if you do find something that is lightly armored and you'll quickly get rid of them with your 620 alpha damage, which will then reload every 6.88 seconds. So, yeah. And finally, for the crew. Now, I'm not going to go into details of what to pick on each one because it's exactly the same on every single tank, let's be honest. Um, you'd pick the exact same kind of combination as you would on a heavy tank, right? You're not going to be sniping this thing. You're going to be on pretty much the front line or the second line of the attack. So there's no real difference between this and, say, a heavy tank. You know, you're going to want repairs. You're going to want brothers in arms, the standard kind of stuff. What I will go through, though, is when it changes in the line, and that is from the 82 to the 88. And from the 88, you then have the same crew all the way up to the Badger, which is six crew members, one of them being a commander, gunner, driver, radio product, loader, loader. Um, you can't actually see that, but there you go. So each one of these is exactly the same all the way up. As you can see, 87, same thing, all the way up to, obviously, the Badger, if we then just select it in, in Garage, you'll see you have Commander, Gunner, Driver, Radio Operator, Loader, Loader. So this is not too much of a bad grind if you're considering the crew. Um, however, yeah, the ATA and all of this is incredibly slow, very, very easy to pen as well with the big Capoda on top with the ATA and the 87. Um, yes, the 87 is a little bit better than the 88, but these can be quite painful to grind. Once you get the 8015, it's not too bad, but it's still definitely not amazing. But even then, the tortoise is the main one. The tortoise into the badger is amazing. But the rest of these are just meh. There will be definitely times where you don't want to play the game anymore, where you're playing those tanks. Anyway, I think that's more than enough talking. Let's go and play some games, shall we? Okay, so we are now on Manaheim line. And if you notice that the percent has gone down, it's because I am trying to find a game that isn't 15.5. Um, <laughs> which actually brings up a very good point. Um, in these types of videos, I'm not just going to show you, you know, just the first games that I play. Because it needs to be showing you the strengths and weaknesses of this tank. And the weakness of this tank is that it's so bloody slow sometimes. And getting to location and just chasing damage is really annoying. Um, that you just don't sometimes get to the location that you want to get to. You sometimes need to chase damage. And in those games where you need to chase the damage, it's super frustrating um, to actually play. Um, and if you're trying to go for marks of excellence, it's one of those things where you don't want to be chasing damage. If you chase damage, then it is not going <laughs> to... If, you're... if you're chasing damage, it's going to be really, really annoying going at only 35 kilometers an hour. Uh, the E3 did not have fun, did he? Uh, I don't even know why I just done that. I could have just intuitioned it in a second, but... Okay, could my gun, like, maybe go where I'm aiming it, though? That'd be quite nice. Okay, no, apparently not. No, that is uh, not happening. This guy needs to try and retreat. This 430U is peeking out. Don't hit it. Don't hit two. Okay, I'll take one from this 452k. I know. Maybe not. Okay, this side's going to have to do. Even though I would prefer to be on the left-hand side, this will have to do from this side. Although we are still winning the other side. There's no way that I can help out that E100 that was down there. Because we are getting overrun here. Um, my AMX 
decided that he would just run off. Uh, the Kran and the 452K have gone to the other side of the map, which is not good. So we have to be... Really? I hate it when HE does that. And it just does, it, you know, it does 54 damage, but it knocks out your, uh, one of your crew members. But it just shouldn't do that. I'm sorry, what? Doesn't he have 320 heat? And he's just done that? Sure thing, man. Sure thing. He, he just rolled massively. That he just high rolled his pen so much. That must have been like a max roll on his pen. It's also going to be very annoying to try and pen this guy. And go for his rear. You still firing HE? No. Well, it's hard to hit this guy, apparently. Um, let alone pen. Am I not allowed? There we go. Wonderful. Why would I withdraw from this position? Me and this E3 have got this. We may run out of ammo, but... Me and this E3, got, E3 have got this. Okay, so this... I can actually overmatch his upper um, bit there. I can actually pen the little T-bar. As well on the E100 with standard rounds. As long as this guy dies, which it looks like he is. I can actually turn this. I can kill this guy. Nice. All is well. We might as well switch to APCR here. One into him. This is where this tank is just dumb, in my opinion. Um... You know, they, they, they can't pen me unless they massively roll high on the pen like the 452K did. Um, they just don't have a chance unless they have like an E3 or something. Um, and even then, like the E3 at this type of angle might not even pen it. Is this guy permatract? No, no. Hello. Don't quite have the shot onto his lower plate. It's worth a try, but... This is very, very good combined. And the problem with this tank, right? Anyone can do this. Like, look, I'm just literally farming. Anybody can do this. I just sit here. They can't pen me. I can pen them. Anybody can do this. I mean, maybe they wouldn't have the the idea of moving back, and they might have died just sitting there doing nothing, which is why it's so important to move back in this type of scenario. But anybody can just sit here, hold down, and just do damage. And in these scenarios, this is where the tank is insane, right? Where the enemy has to come to you, and you can just farm them. You know, you have insane DPM, you have insane armor, you just sit there, hold down, and they cannot do anything to you. Unfortunately, though, there is no real way of me getting much more out of this game unless they continue to do so. Which is one of the weaknesses of this tank. Obviously, not having a turret is very, very uh, inflexible in that regard. I could actually go back to AP. I go back to AP and I just try and pen this guy's Capoda again. I'm not too sure if I can actually pen it with HE. It would be quite funny if I HE penned his Capoda. So the Mino, I don't know where the E100's gone. Maybe we should go for a little flanking time, you know? We'll go on an expedition. Go and have a little look. I was going to load HE for the Manticore, but... 
don't think that it's going to matter. I don't think we'll even be able to see the manticore. Well, there's E100. There's our new best friend. We also have the gorilla, which is uh, an issue. I'm surprised the FE haven't killed this guy yet. I'm going to have to cross this. <sighs> okay, he's dead. That's fine. Three twenty APCR though against an E one hundred. It's not a fun time. That is not a fun time. He's dead. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure. Sorry, I'm not allowed to play this game anymore. Well, there you go. I mean, we actually got a game that wasn't instantly over within the first two minutes. And also artillery penning for... yes. It shows you how bad the uh, side armor actually is on this tank, to be fair. But, apply. Wonderful. 5,400. So yes, the strengths and weaknesses of the Badger. I'm pretty sure most of them were shown there. Right? You have the problem of it not being fast enough to chase the end game damage. Right? There is so many times where you're going to get into a into a battle and it's like a 15-5 game and the enemy team just flop and you are nowhere near fast enough to chase that damage. You could have all the DPM in the world, but if you are not fast enough to get to them, it is a useless statistic. And then as you saw in that, that last game, you have the strength of if people are just going to be pushing you, you're just invulnerable, right? There's nothing they can do. I actually want to know where he penned. I mean, I also want to know where the arty pen, but there you go, look. So on the engine deck, he managed to pen that. Um, but what did this guy pen? This guy managed to pen that? What? Yeah, the Badger is a solid vehicle. It's just not quite fast enough sometimes. But my God, when it does work, it's insane. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, you know what to do. And you can go watch another video on the screen right now. And I'll see you all in the next video.